Hello and welcome Matrix Live! This week our guest is Andy, who's been working on a project going by the name of Matrix WYSIWYG. What could that be? Let's find out immediately! Andy, for me WYSIWYG is an acronym used to qualify text editors. Notepad is a, tech, is a raw text editor and Office Suites are rich text editors, WYSIWYG editors. Uh, WYSIWYG standing for what you see is what you get. Uh, what is Matrix WYSIWYG? Are you launching a Matrix Office Suite? Uh, no, definitely not. Um, so just first of all, just apologies for the name. We are trying to find a better name um, because I think WYSIWYG is not really something that people even say anymore. And it's a terrible name. Um, but yeah, so uh, no, we're not launching uh, uh, an office suite. What we're doing is trying to write um, a new version of the bit of the screen where you type in your messages to send a message in a matrix client. Um, so at the moment, in some of the clients, there's some support for kind of rich text editing where you um, you type in markdown uh, format, which is like a, a format for that gets converted into nice rich text. And some some of the clients have some help with that. Um, but what we want to do, um, and what we've been wanting to do for a long time but haven't got round to, um, is try and write a uh, a, a, a little text editor widget that sits at the bottom of the screen exactly where the thing sits now, but it lets you do things like bold text and lists and things like that in a way that is easy to use and doesn't require you to learn markdown format. Okay, fantastic. Um, so at the moment, markdown is quite simple, but not everybody is familiar with it. So WYSIWYG would be um, a way to see, to see what you see is what you get. So to have the actual formatting in, in the composer where you compose the message uh, before you send it. Can we see that in action actually? Yes, you can. Um, I'll show you a little bit now. Okay, so this is our live demo. Um, you can get to it using this uh, URL, which I'm sure we'll um, put in the show notes. Um, but then uh, what you can see on the screen is some test stuff, which I'll maybe talk about in a second. But then the main thing um, for you to see is the text editor component at the top here, so I can type things. Uh, and then I can do things like select some text and make it bold, um, and select some other text to make it italic. And then I can do things that, have been, that are more tricky to code, like select two bits that are different formatting and then by, underline both of them and they still, everything still comes out the way it should, um, and make new paragraphs and um, make lists which looks like it's not working right now. And, oh no, uh, demo effect. Yeah. <laughs> and um, let's, all right, so let's uh, show you some of that again. So the the other thing which is working really nicely is um, undo and redo. So um, I can just undo, redo all of my actions and that works nicely. And I can make some list items like so. Uh, and as you'll see, there, you are gonna see some glitches in this demo because like I said, it's still pretty raw right now. Yeah, it's um, early days. Uh, so we, we can see a, a model uh, below and then test cases. What are mm -hmm. those tests about? Okay, so the model is, is essentially just exactly the HTML that uh, you're creating. Um, so this is really for our debugging purposes. We can see just see what HTML it created um, when you make, perform those actions in the editor. Uh, and also the uh, another thing that's very nice about this project um, is that we're taking like a really test-driven approach to how we do things. So um, uh, this is kind of helping, this bottom part here is really helping us do that because um, we what we do is let's start with a fresh page. If I, if I do some actions, um, like for example, um, type some text and then bold something, it's actually building a little test case in the Rust programming language down the bottom here. So this, this is kind of the initial thing that says, start off with um, text that looks like this, and then do this action, like bold that piece of text. And then we can say, make this piece italic. So we selected some stuff, and then we made it italic. Um, so this kind of, this isn't gonna be like a final test that we, we actually copy and paste into our code, but it's gonna be like the start of um, how we would write a unit test for the particular actions we're trying to perform here. So hopefully that'll help us with our debugging as well. Very cool. Uh, so you're going to have a, a stronger uh, library that you can torture and make sure that you did not break things uh, when re releasing new features. 
that's the plan. And if you find bugs and report them, it's useful to paste this stuff in on, in your bug report. So please do that. All right. So you work for elements. Is this going to end in the clients? And if yes, in all of them? Uh, so, well, first of all, just for anyone who's worried, um, if you really hate rich text editing widgets, which is something which I have a lot of sympathy with myself, um, we are definitely going to give you a way to escape from uh, the rich text editing widget um, and just be able to type uh, plain text um, that, that will be converted using Markdown as before. Um, uh, but we're also hoping that this rich text editing widget won't be as annoying as some of the ones you've used before, and it will be fast. That's our plan. Um, so you'll want to use it. But anyway, yeah, to answer the question, um, the aim, uh, if it's good enough, if it is non-annoying and a really useful thing, the aim is to put it into the Element clients, uh, which would be Element Web, iOS, and Android. Um, but also the aim is to write a widget that is reusable by other people if they want to use it. Um, so one of the cool things about this project and the way we're approaching it is a lot of the code is uh, cross-platform code. So it's exactly the same code on all three platforms because we're writing it in Rust. Um, so the idea is to have something that's really, really consistent between the different element clients and supports all the features you would want if you're writing a, a matrix client. So maybe other people will want to use it as well. And that could be on um, web platform or on uh, other platforms that um, this shared code could get compiled to. Right. So in the demo, what you showed uh, are some bits of UI to do the plumbing, but the key thing that you're showing is an engine that processes the text and the button presses as an input and that produces a, a model of what happened. I guess it will require a little bit of integration work to end up in Element. That's right. Yeah, it's um, uh, we have a, the, the demo that I showed you is our example app. So it's like a tiny little app that just wraps around the, the, the real thing. And the real thing is what will get integrated into the element clients. Um, it will take it, um, some work, but it's really only just kind of putting the thing there and, and adding the buttons around it. Um, uh, that when you get to more complicated interactions, there'll be a bit more integration, but we're planning to have uh, in labs, in the element clients, um, in uh, maybe by the end of October, uh, in labs, you'll be able to try out the um, uh, the first version with the simplest text editing in this in this new editor. All right. So that that was going to be my next question: Is the engine ready, done, finished forever, uh, or does it mean it's going to land in Element quickly? So you are targeting the end of October, maybe if things go right. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess the engine is not completely finished. You plan maybe to extend it. Yeah, so we're doing really simple stuff first. Like we want, we want to get this right because if you're trying to edit text and things go wrong, it's really, really annoying. So um, yeah, we're going to do simple stuff, try and get that working nicely, and then expand it out. So simple stuff will be like bold, italic, things like that. And then coming later will be lists and that some of the things that can get more hairy. Um, and then later will be um, pills, which is like mentioning a user or a room and then having that display differently and auto-complete to pick that stuff, all that kind of thing. Um, also potentially slash commands with autocomplete. Um, so like I said, the idea is to have a consistent and full featured experience between all the different element clients, but actually getting all of that stuff working will take time and we want to make sure, like I said, it's not annoying in the meantime. So we'll take it slowly. Yeah, it's it's really right to point out that uh, WYSIWYG can be annoying because I have at least another competitor in mind who did things very wrong and who ended up upsetting a lot of people. So uh, really great to see that you're going to ship incremental versions of it and to be able to correct course if people are not happy with that. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned that uh, it was for people who wanted to create matrix clients, but is it just for matrix or is it a general pur purpose with the engine that all the projects could use? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, right now, we're focusing on like a really good thing for Matrix, and that's quite a focused thing. You know, there's a lot of so the way it works, by the way, in, in the background is when when you write when you send a Matrix message, it normally contains a plain text version and an HTML version. So, what you're creating when you use our, our uh, WYSIWYG editor is the, is an HTML version of your message. Um, so, anyone who wants to make HTML in theory might be interested in. Um, 
this this editor um uh, yeah like i say at the moment we're really focused on making a really good one for matrix but we've also got in the back of our minds uh some other kind of matrix related things you might want to do with it like uh collaborative editing or something like that so very much not what we're doing now but uh in theory uh someone somewhere needs to write a cross-platform rich editor for all that cool stuff maybe just maybe this could be the start of of something like that so that could be used for example in the uh collabs app uh, i remember we had somebody who worked on um uh, shared text editing with TRDTs uh, tr transported over matrix. So they could be in theory uh, using that um, to handle text input and, and handle uh, formatting. Uh, yeah, and a that... lot of this stuff is, is restricted to web, right? A lot of people have rich text editors that work nicely on web, but then they don't have something equivalent on other platforms. So hopefully this project uh, could could solve that or or even just show how someone else might solve it. You know, maybe this isn't the answer, but it's might be a learning process. Right, and why deciding to uh, make Matrix WYSIWYG uh, completely open source? Was it not a competitive ad advantage of Element over other clients? Does it make sense to uh, make it completely open? Uh, it, it does make sense to make it completely open for the same reason that the whole of um, uh, the Element client is completely open, which is that it's good for Matrix, and what's good for Matrix is good for Element. And uh, we, we want uh, everyone to be able to use like an awesome text editor. So uh, that might be people who are running in a different platform from the one supported by the Element clients, for example. So with the project being open source, uh, do you hope that some people are going to jump in and contribute back to the project uh, by using it, finding bugs, uh, fixing them and contributing upstream? Or is it something uh, that you want to um, be open, but really stay in control of? Uh, no, absolutely. We 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 would welcome contributions. Um, so the the project's on GitHub, and I'm sure we'll put the link um, somewhere near this video. Uh, and yeah, at the moment, uh, like I said, don't get your expectations too high. There's lots of bugs, but logging, finding those bugs and logging them is a really helpful thing for us. Uh, contributing code is awesome. Um, we w one of the reasons we're um, we do stuff like this openly, uh, even even when um, funding comes from different places, uh, is that we really benefit from that kind of public thing. So in, th in this case, this project is um, uh, something that we always plan to do, um, but something that where uh, some of the money for that, or most of the money, I want to say that differently, um, but the money for that is coming from a, a, a particular customer um they've managed to bring up our roadmap by by funding it so um they uh they and we get the benefit of contribute those external contributions uh you know just a really good everyone wins reason to do do these things in the open pretty good i uh, i really like the uh upstream first approach uh because a customer can come with some money to prioritize things and still get that to be uh, in upstream element because it's, uh, it makes sense actually to have it upstream and not to have to maintain a branch downstream and to, to rebase it every time there is a new version that is released uh, upstream and that does not have your downstream uh, change. So uh, it's, it's really cool. Yeah, it's really I've tried, cool I've tried to do projects based on some kind of open source code without contributing upstream and it's just awful. And so everyone wins if you do this the good way. <laughs> exactly. Um, do you have any final thoughts to conclude the episode? Um, uh, yeah, I think uh, this is a typical element project, right? And a typical matrix project maybe, which is that it's super ambitious. Like we're, we're building this thing from scratch um, and there's good reason to be that ambitious, which is that uh, we didn't, we couldn't find anything else that already solves this problem and solves it in and a high enough quality way that we want. But um, it's really, really exciting and fun to be involved in a super ambitious project. It comes with its, uh, its stresses as well, but it's, uh, it's awesome. All right, fantastic. Thank you very much, Andy. And I see you around Matrix Live. Thank you, see you soon.